Hey everyone, Mr. Mo here. Um, welcome to our third session of Office Hours. Okay, now, if you're not familiar with Office Hours, this Office Hours is really our attempt uh, at a show where we get together in a live session and talk about basic mathematics concepts. Okay, and it's our hope that as we go through these uh, and you get you get the foundations of these mathematical concepts, that you can then build on top of them, and it makes you a better uh, mathematician. Okay. Um, and really, if, you, if you're able to get the fundamentals down, then building on top of it is a lot easier. So we always wanna make sure that you, um, whatever topic we're talking about, that you understand the basic fundamentals of, of mathematics so that it then allows you, when you get into the harder topics, to have that foundation to build upon, okay? Um, so um, without further ado, we're gonna really just jump into um, our presentation here so that you can kind of see uh, from a visual standpoint, some of the concepts that we're talking about, okay? So today we're talking about fractions, all right? Now fractions, uh, there's a whole breadth of, uh, is creates a whole area that we can really get into, right? Um, but again, sticking with the whole idea of creating a foundation, we're gonna start from the beginning, okay? Uh, talk about some basic concepts of fractions and then get into the rules for basic operations of fractions, okay? So let me pull up my uh, slide deck here. I'll share it. Okay, um, and I'm gonna pull up my, my iPad here so that I can um, follow along here. All right, so again, this session is called Fractions basic operations okay so we want to make sure um one second all right there we go we want to make sure that we understand first of all what a fraction is and some of the basic operations that will allow us to interact and uh, manipulate fractions so number one what are fractions and feel free to type into the chat box um, your answer. So when somebody tells you what a fraction is or asks you what a, what a fraction is, what, uh, what do you think a fraction is? Give me in your own words uh, what a fraction is. And I'll wait and see if anybody responds here before I proceed. Any, any ideas on what a fraction is in your own words? A number with a numerator and a denominator. Okay, good, good. Yep, fractions do have uh, numerators and denominators. Um, and it is a number. And point, like just basic concept, what is a fraction? And, um, you know, and, and a lot of times when, when, when people teach math, they really don't flush this out enough for, for kids to understand like, why are we using fractions and what purpose do they serve? Okay. So um, that was a good uh, answer there, Zor. So let's see. So typically, and this is probably your first exposure to when you start learning about fractions, typically your teacher will give you or show you this pizza example. Okay. So this is the classic pizza example. Okay. So you have one whole pizza, but you can break that pizza up into slices. Okay. And so if we were to say, if we were to write this slice as a fraction, we would say what? How would we write that as a fraction? We would say that that's one slice over what? One eighth, that's right, Zora, one eighth, okay? one slice out of eight slices, one slice out of eight slices, okay? Okay, but this is this is one whole, but if we were to chop it up into eight equal sizes and we pulled one, then we would represent that one slice as a one out of eight, okay? So um, that's the classic one right there. And let me see if I, uh... but, um, let me see if I can erase this here. There we are. 
All right. So we can use the pizza example, but then we also can use really any example, right? So, um, so what do we have? So we're going to go through here. We got different shapes, okay? And they're cut up in different uh, parts and pieces, okay? Um, but these all can essentially represent what a fraction is, right? So we have a circle in this first one here. So how would you write that red shaded area as a fraction of the entire circle? And go ahead and write it in the in the chat there. So we're going to go through a couple of these. So this first box right here, if you were to write that as a fraction, what would it be? What does that red colored part represent in terms of a fraction? That's right, one over two, one half, okay? So half of this circle is shaded red, okay? So one over two. All right, let's go down here to this uh, this circle right here. What would that be? Three fourths, good. Um, let's go right here to this box here. What would that one be? One fourth, right? That's right. So one out of the four, okay? One out of the two. Three out of the four right here, okay? Three out of the four are shaded. Now here, what would this this one right here, what would that one be? And it can be two things, and this is where the simplification comes in. So if we were, that's two out of four, that's right, two out of four, or if we were to simplify that and just look at this one section here, what would that be? How would we write that? One half, right, one over two, good, good job. And then let's see, let's look at one more, this one right here. What would that be in fraction form if we were, turning that into a one out of five, one over five, right? Good, good. So you guys get the idea of, of how we use fractions, okay? It's really a representation of a certain portion of a whole, okay? A certain number or portion of a whole, okay? So that's that's key to remember, right? So, so now we're gonna take a step back and, and if you've seen some of my other episodes, I um, always like to go over this because it kind of helps set, again, the foundation. So when I say what is math, if you've seen my episodes in the previous, uh, previous lessons, what do I say that math is? When we're learning math, what are we learning? And go ahead and write it in the chat box. And if, if no one remembers, I'll just step through. What are we learning? What is math? You know, everybody has to take math from K through 12, typically. But, you know, a lot of times kids don't really know how to define what is math. And so I've come up with a simple um, a solution to solving problems. Good, good. I've come up with a simple definition of math as it's taught in school. So, so when we learn math, really what we're learning are shortcuts to find amounts, okay? So we're learning shortcuts, and I'll show an illustration of this, to find amounts, okay? So if you if you think about all of the math that you're learning in school, you're usually learning steps, okay? First do this, then secondly do that, then third do that, okay? So we're learning shortcuts to find amounts. When I say amounts, every time we're talking about numbers, Numbers really represent just amounts. Like if we go back to the pizza example, um, you know, that's that's um, we're, we're, we're learning that one eighth is actually an amount of pizza. OK, so uh, every time we write a number, it's not just um, a number for the sake of writing a number. Those numbers actually represent something. That's why when you see in, and typically your homework, it'll say, you know, if, if Jeremy has three apples and John has four oranges, okay? So these numbers don't simply exist by themselves. They actually represent amounts, okay? And so that's why I always want to make sure that when we're talking about math, we understand that we're learning shortcuts to find amounts of something, okay? So let's go back now to to the pizza example from a fractions, okay? So here, uh, let's say we wanna figure out for whatever reason that how much pizza we would have. Let's say we got two, two uh, we had ordered two pieces, okay, over here on the left. 
Um, but we want to figure out for some reason and um, if we added the what was left over from one box of pizza to what was left over from a second box of pizza, how much total pizza would we have? Okay, so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually write directly here onto the uh, onto the the slide. Okay, so over here, what fraction do we have over here? What fraction of pizza slices do we have? Anybody, what fraction? Two out of eight, that's right. Two out of eight, okay? Plus, we wanna add the, the slices over here, okay? What do we have on this side? Three out of eight, okay, good. Now, before we even learn any shortcuts, we already know that we can simply add one, two, three, four, and five. And then we would get what over here as the final answer? Five over eight, that's right, five out of eight. Okay, this would be our answer, okay? So now typically when in your math homework, a lot of times you only get this part right here, okay? Down here, all right? But again, usually these numbers are representing actual objects like pizza, okay? Or apples or something like that, all right? so. Always remember when you're working with numbers, those numbers, even if they don't tell you what they represent in real life when we use math, they always represent something, okay? Now, it may be number of atoms, it may be apples, it may be um, you know, pressure in a vessel, anything. Um, those numbers actually represent something like they do here. They represent pizza slices, okay? Out of a hole, okay? So. Um, so that's I just wanted to go back over this slide real quick so that you remember that really when we're learning math going forward, we're learning shortcuts to find amounts. OK. So before we can get into actually understanding how we uh, do operations or like multiplication, division, subtraction with fractions, we need to understand the uh, terminology or, you know, the anatomy or. Uh, what do we call different parts of a fraction? Okay, so over here we have, um, one second, we have our fraction right here, okay? Two fifths or two over five, okay? What do we call this top number here? What is the name of this top number represented in the fraction? The numerator, that's right. So Zora said it, the numerator, okay? So, and again, we need to remember these so that when we move forward into learning steps on how we're going to be calling these uh, parts of a fraction out, okay? So what do we call the bottom number, number five? What is that called? What is the bottom number called? The denominator, that's right, okay? So you have the numerator and you have the denominator, okay? And this is gonna be very important, okay? Because when we move into learning the rules for working with fractions, we're, we're gonna refer to the top number as the numerator and the bottom number as the denominator, okay? Now, why they came up with those names, I don't know, but that's what they are and that's the, the, what we use to communicate that, all right? So these are the parts of the fraction. All right, so here we are. Now we're here at the rules for operations, okay? So uh, essentially for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and these are all simple simple problems here. Uh, here are the rules, okay? <clears throat> and I like to use this, this uh, four-part chart for the basic operations so you can kind of see how it differs, all right? So let's look at addition. So the first thing we wanna do when we're adding fractions, we wanna make sure that both fractions have the same denominator. Remember, when we say denominator, we're talking about this number underneath the uh, the line, okay? So five. So if they both have the same denominator, then you can add them, okay? <clears throat> now, as we get into more advanced operations with fractions, we can talk about how do you add uh, fractions that don't have the same denominator, okay? And there's a process for finding that information. 
which we won't get into today. But from a basic standpoint, how do we add two fractions? Okay, so first we want to make sure that they have the same denominator, which they do. And then number two, we want to add the numerators as you normally would add any number. Okay, and so if you take the numerators of these two, you add them together three plus one and you get four. And then number three, you maintain the common denominator, which is the, the number five. So we keep that the same, okay? So then our answer here is four fifths, okay? Or four over five, all right? So here are the rules for addition. Now subtraction, same thing. We wanna make sure that uh, both fractions have the same denominator, which they do. They're both eight, okay? Then step number two, you wanna subtract the numerators normally. So seven minus two, you get five, and then you keep it as number three says, you maintain the denominator, okay? So then the answer to this operation is five over eight, okay? Now, when we come to multiplication, it gets a little bit, uh, not more tricky, but there's some different rules. So we don't have to maintain the same denominator. So we can multiply numbers with different denominators. So like you see, this one has six, this one has four. For us to multiply them, they don't have to have the same denominator, okay? So we don't have that step in here. So, so the first step then is to multiply the numerators of the fraction. So two times one gives you two, and then you multiply the denominators of the fraction. Six times four gives you 24. So this is two over 24. Now that's not simplified, or um, but you know this is what it works out to um, as a first pass, and then you can simplify that to uh, to the simplest terms, okay? And so, uh, so pretty straightforward here. Remember the main thing here, the main difference is that the denominators do not have to be the same to multiply. All right, so now over to division. Now division is, this operation probably is the most, uh, I guess is the weirdest one of all four, okay? And so when we multiply, we have to multiply the first fraction Oh, when we, let me step back. So when we do division, so let's three eighths, three eighths divided by three fourths. The first thing we need to do is multiply. We're multiplying, okay, which is weird. So we're to do division, we have to multiply. <laughs> so we multiply the first fraction right here, three eighths, we keep that the same. And by the reciprocal or the inverse of the divisor or the second fraction, the divisor is the number that's being divided by when you say divided by okay so the reciprocal or it means that we flip it or the inverse okay so instead of being three over four we flip it to four over three okay so the the four comes up top and the three comes below and then you have this number here and then you change this operator to multiplication instead of division okay and so when you now that you have this multiplication you can just multiply as you would over here, okay? So three times four is 12, and then the eight times three gives you 24, okay? And so it would be the same thing if, um, so one second here, let me change this. So we would have, essentially if we were doing this up here, we would have, uh, this answer would actually be 12 over 24. So, but, the, the intermediate step in between is to do the multiplication, okay? Cool. So these are the rules for operations, okay? And I always, um, when we're going through basically learning the operations or any of these rules, so you see how it looks now and with the example problems, now we're gonna actually go through and try to figure out um, some answers to the problems that you see here, okay? So these don't have answers to them, but we wanna, but I've left the steps that you have to follow right there so that you can just look right up and figure out what you have to do. So let's go through uh, problem, the addition operation, okay? So what do we have here? So, um, and you, you guys, if you already know the answer, go ahead and put the answer for the addition step here. For six over 13 plus four over 13, what's my answer? Uh, somebody said 10 over 13. That's right. So we have the same numerator, right? Uh, one second. So they both have the same denominator, I'm sorry, right, which is step number one. And then we add the numerators like we normally would add any number. 
So six plus four is 10, and then we keep it over the same denominator. That's correct. All right, so let's go on over to the subtraction. So what do we have here in the subtraction? What's the answer there? We've got, somebody said 10 over 35, good. So you guys are getting this pretty pretty easily, right? So same thing. Um, you have, uh, make sure that both fractions have the same denominator, which they do. In this case, it's 35. And then we subtract the numerators normally. So 17 minus seven is 10. And then our answer is 10 over 35, okay? So now let's go down to um, the multiplication, okay? So what, what's my answer here for the multiplication? So somebody said 24 over 56, good. And that's not simplified, but you get the, uh, if you follow the steps, you see how you get the answer. So multiply the numerators of the fraction, four times six, you get 24, and then multiply the denominators of the fraction, seven times eight, and you get 56. And so here's your answer, okay? And then finally, we'll come over to the division. There's gonna be a couple more steps here. So what's uh, what answer do we have here? So we wanna keep that the same, I'll start writing it out. Two over six, and then we wanna multiply it by what? What do we have? Multiply it by, that's right, seven over four we want to flip what we have up here. So the four goes to the bottom and the seven goes to the top, which we have right here. And then that equals what? What's the answer there? Yep, 14 over 24. Okay, good, good. So um, and, the, and then in the deeper learning piece, <clears throat> excuse me, let me close this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so uh, in the deeper learning section of this session, which will be posted once we post a recorded video of this session, um, we're actually going to have some more example problems for you to go through, OK? Um, but basically, once you get down the basic operations of when and how you can multiply, divide, and what to do, um, then everything else becomes easier. Then once you master that, then you can move on to the more difficult fraction problems like uh, mixed numerals, how to divide that, um, what do you do when you don't have the same denominator, things of that nature, okay? So there are different processes that you have to learn to get those, okay, a different process. Um, so uh, hopefully, that was uh, informative to you, uh, can help you build a, a stronger foundation around fractions. If you haven't already, if you're maybe just getting into fractions and trying to figure out uh, what are the rules. Um, but I've always found that if you break down to kids like yourself, that really you need to understand the process and when to do something, right? So if it's this, then do that, okay? So in the case of, um, of multiplication, if it's, if it's multiplication, then you can do these steps, okay? So if you approach math from that standpoint, then it becomes a lot easier, okay? Now, I know a lot of times people want you to understand what they call numeracy, um, but I found that it's easier to first understand that what we're learning is a process, okay? And then the number sense comes into play after that, okay? So uh, any questions for me as we conclude? No questions? Okay, cool. Um, again, this recording will be available um, after uh, on the website in the office hours class. Um, hopefully, again, it, it provides a little bit stronger foundation for, for fractions as you move forward. Um, but really, um, I wanted you to understand the concepts of what a fraction is and why we use them. And that really uh, math is really, when we're learning math, we're learning shortcuts to find them out. So hopefully that's helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave me some questions below the video. 
um, once we post it on the website. Okay, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So appreciate you. Have a good night.